Well, uh, it's a great privilege to to be here with you, and I appreciate the song leader picking the hymns that he did. I was looking at "O Church Arise" and that first stanza. It says, "If you don't mind me repeating the words, uh, O Church, arise and put your armor on." And and I have a hobby of collecting armor. When I went. On my honeymoon to England, I bought some armor. I'm going to show you some armor. Uh, in a few minutes here, I'm going to talk about the shield of faith, but that's based on real Roman armor. But I just want to read this really quick. Hear the call of Christ, our captain. For now, the weak can say that they are strong. Amen. In the strength that God has given, with shield of faith and belt of truth, will stand against the devil's lies. And I, I want to just talk briefly here about the shield of faith. And there's so much that could be said. Uh, and I know you have the slides in front of you, but I just want to start with a word of prayer, if you don't mind. Father, we thank you for this time. Lord, we honor you. We take our place in Christ. We take by faith the fact that you said we've been raised up and seated together with you. An amazing truth. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I take my place there. We together as a church, we take our place, even though they're sitting in a church in New York City. Spiritually speaking, we're there. We're there with Christ. We're at the throne on the right hand of the Father, far above the enemy that's tormenting and or, or oppressing us or or accusing us but lord we thank you that we have the answer it's in christ and we take our place in him and with christ we stand resisting the enemy that nothing would interfere with this message that there would be ears to hear and eyes to see lord that you would speak to me speak to all of us that there is an answer for the enemy's accusations that we can live a life of joy and and life abundantly so lord we just ask that you lead us now in these next few minutes by your spirit we pray in jesus name amen well again i'm still learning all about this but um i talked to otto conning he was a missionary to papua new guinea and his story is amazing the snake story but he was trying to be a missionary there in papua new guinea and after seven years with hardly any fruit. He was so discouraged. He wanted to quit. He was looking for every possible reason that he could quit. And lo and behold, a pilot dropped off this book called The Authority of the Believer. And it changed his life and in his ministry. It was just amazing. For the first time, he started seeing people get saved after he understood the the authority that he has as a believer in Christ. And we've been on a theme here. Uh, this is the eighth message on the authority of the believer. And I've just been sharing, uh, teaching, preaching on this. And this message from Philippians chapter 3, I start off with Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16, because this verse, I mean... If you look at the verse, and we use the King James, if you look at the verse, it says, above all. And that got my attention. Why would Paul say above all? And, and I just really started studying and thinking and meditating on this verse. But it says, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. So that's another thing that really spoke to me above all, and then all the fiery darts. And I thought, how is this possible? But I want to show you something. Um, I I had my shield. I, I bought this in England, like I said, about 25 years ago. I also had my helmet here. Um, this is actually taken off of a real soldier in battle. So this is the real deal. I, it's amazing. Um, and then um, I have my my sword too. So I just wanted to show you that. Again, I have a hobby of collecting armor, but I've been captivated in the last few weeks about the shield of faith. And I believe 
I honestly believe the shield of faith is the ultimate weapon to overcome Satan accusations, Satan's accusations, so we can keep our joy and stay in the fight to win precious souls for Christ. The enemy wants us discouraged, depressed, and quit. And I believe if we understand Philippians chapter 3, then Philippians chapter 4, especially verse 4, is possible. I mean, the Word of God is just awesome, and it's perfect, and obviously inspired by the Holy Spirit, led uh, by the Holy Spirit. But as I was looking at Philippians chapter 3, I believe I know why Paul could say, in verse 4 of chapter 4, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice, and the key is in the Lord. And that's what we want to look at here. I believe the, the shield of faith is the ultimate weapon, and I believe the ultimate truth that we hold over the enemy by faith using our shield of faith. And I'm going to hold up my, my shield of faith here, is that we are under grace. We're not under the law. And we all love the law. We want to live above the law. I mean, we have verses like Galatians chapter 2, 19 through 21. For I through the law am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. And then he goes on to, to write about a most, what are really one of the most famous verses in the New Testament for us. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me in the life which I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God, and I emphasize the word faith, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness cometh or come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. And then we have Galatians 5.18, but if you be led of the Spirit, you're not under the law. So we are no, we are no longer under the law, but that doesn't mean we can live any way we want. None of us here want to sin. I mean, we love the Lord. We want to serve Him. And even Paul, I mean, if you're familiar with 1 Corinthians 6, 11, it says, and such were some of ye, or you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus, by the Spirit of our God. But the next verse, the next verse, 1 Corinthians 6, 12 says, all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful unto me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Any, So we're not saying that this is a license to sin. No, 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 not at all. I mean, we're all here wanting to serve God. But my point is, what does the enemy use to accuse us? Think about it. He uses the law. But we're not under the law. We're under grace. And, and I believe this verse in Philippians 3, 9 is just an absolute awesome rhema. If you, if you look at verse 9, before we go back and look at the background of it, look at Philippians verse chapter 3, verse 9, and be found in him, in him, there it is, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness, which is of God by faith. And, and I believe Paul was referring to this verse when he talked about the shield of faith there in Ephesians. I mean, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians are so similar. They just, I mean, one can comment on the other. I mean, they're I look at like an Oreo cookie. I mean, this is something that God gave me. I mean, you look at Ephesians, on the one side, you got uh, Colossians on the other, and you got Philippians right in the middle. But I mean, the, the, those three epistles, they just so well blend together. But, but, but this verse, I just started meditating on this verse. I mean, it just hit me and be found in him. And if you go back, and again, we read it already at the beginning of the service, but in Philippians chapter 3, verse 1, we we read it already, verses 1, 2, but, but look at verse 4. I just want to emphasize, verse 4, Paul is saying, Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath, whereof he might trust in the flesh, I am more. And he talks about his 
heritage, his genealogy, circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew, he was in touch of the law of Pharisees, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the rights of the law, blameless. But I mean, here's Paul, the best, the, the best of the best, you know, really, probably the greatest Pharisee. Uh, and he's willing to give it all, give it all up. Verse 7, but what things were gained to me, those I kind of lost for Christ. So I was asking the question, what is he giving up or what is he counting lost or what is he counting all lost for Christ? But, but I started saying, what does he mean by Christ for Christ? Well, look at verse 8, yea, doubtless, and I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus. So, so I, was, I was looking at that verse, and he's calling it excellent, this knowledge of Christ Jesus. He's saying the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus. And he says, for, I, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dumb, that I may win Christ, and I'm thinking, win Christ. What does Paul mean? He's he's willing to forsake to count all that he's done, his heritage, everything, all his accomplishments. He's willing to, to give it all, and he and he and he did give it all up, of course. And he counted them but dumb that he may win Christ. And I was thinking, what does he mean? Win what? And then if you look at this verse, verse 9, it says, and be found in him. I believe that's the key to staying right with God and living victoriously and overcoming the enemy. We just need to stay in him. It works. We got saved in him in whom we have redemption to his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. And we live in him by faith. Like Colossians chapter 2, verse 6, as you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord by faith, of course, so we walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, established in the faith. So I believe uh, this Rhema, uh, Paul, was willing to give it all up, and he did, and he counted it, but done, that he may win what? Win this excellent, incredibly awesome knowledge of being found in him. And, and in him is the only safe place to live, in him. And um, I just want to just, I, I have it on my slides here, but I said, what truth or knowledge was so excellent that Paul was willing to forsake all to receive it? And it was this truth of being found in him. And it means living, thinking, and even feeling that it's not my own righteousness, but only by the righteousness of Christ. See, the enemy tries to get us to be discouraged or tempts us to be discouraged by, by wanting us to rely on our own righteousness because it doesn't work. And we've all heard probably <laughs> Jim Van Gelderen talk about zero to 100 if you've been to the conference, the Victory Conference. I mean, famous message. But but the enemy wants us to try to live in our own strength that it just doesn't work. And, and on my notes there, PowerPoint, Satan wants us to rely on our own righteousness, but it really doesn't work. And when we fail, we get discouraged and depressed and we want to quit. But we have an answer here. It's not our own righteousness. Again, I'll go back to the verse here. In verse 9, it says, and be found in him, not in myself. I'm standing here in a building in Cambodia, Phnom Penh, on the third day of their big Buddhist ceremonial uh, feast time. Or it's called Ptumban. This is the third day. It's the high day. It's it. The streets are empty because everybody is in their in their respective village. The other the reason why the streets are empty is because Pol Pot killed 80% of this city. Uh, let, me, let me just explain this. I'm in Phnom Penh, Cambodia, where where uh, Pol Pot uh, uh, led the genocide here. Um, all the doctors were killed. There were only four left. Only. Um, yeah, 
Only four doctors were left. I shared my testimony to the Ministry of Health. That's the government arm, the, the you know, the medical arm of the government. And I try to share my testimony everywhere I go. But I, I shared my testimony how in 1980, and I know the date, it was February um, four, it was February 16th, 1980. I surrendered all to Christ completely. I said, okay, God, you can take my life, whatever you want. And that's when God showed me to start studying medicine. I had no clue what to do. I was just scared to death to end up in a laboratory like Merck or, or you know, these Pfizer, God forbid. But anyway, I, I was studying biology. I didn't know why I was studying biology. I just wanted to study it for fun. But, um, and, and I liked animals. So, and then I studied music too, but but when I, when I surrendered every area of my life to Christ and made him Lord, God just showed me, go into medicine. And um, and um, so I prepared to go to medical school and I went to grad school and then medical school and graduated in 1990 with an MD degree. But but I went to medical school to be a missionary, but but I, I share my testimony um, to the Ministry of Health here. And they said in 1980, there were only four doctors left. So uh, that's why I was recruited to come here. <laughs> so um, anyway, I've been here. I, I, I visited Cambodia 25 years ago. That was the year that Pol Pot died. And then my wife and I came back in the year 2000. We've been here ever since, but I love Cambodia. And um, we've adopted four children. and. And it's now our home and we don't want to leave. So, <laughs> but, and we appreciate it. And I'll talk about this more later and and after lunch, but anyway, but getting back to this, I, um, I just wanted to share um, how Satan wants us to rely on our own righteousness because it doesn't work. And, and, and what I was talking about, Right now, there's this big Buddhist holiday now, and um, it's all about self. I mean, what they're what they're asking the the people to do is cook. Okay, I'll just explain this really quick. They have to cook seven different dishes, delicious food, and they have to go to the Buddhist temple and they throw it around the temple so they can feed the spirits of their dead ancestors. So that's that's what's happening right now in Cambodia. We're on the third day of this. And um, it's huge. I mean, it's like Christmas. You know, everybody's off. The city's empty, like I said. But, but Satan's greatest tool to keep people from coming to Christ to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ is religion. And, um, and, and that's what Satan wants us to rely on or ourselves to try to win the victory when it doesn't work. And we all know that. And we have a wonderful pastor that can teach about this better than I can. But I, I just wanted to share this because this really spoke to me. Look at this, this slide here. It says, my righteousness. Think about this. If you can read this with me, if you see the slide, my righteousness is not dependent on how good I am or how perfectly I behave or how wonderfully I keep the law. It's not based on my performance. I'm already righteous in Christ. I have his righteousness. It's been imputed to me. I'm complete in him. And there are a bunch of verses about this. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God, look at that, who of God has made unto us wisdom, wisdom and righteousness, and sanctification and redemption. And then 2 Corinthians 5.21, for he had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God. Our righteousness is a righteousness of God. It's by faith. Just like you got saved by faith, we must live by faith. But the enemy wants us to think itself. I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to be perfect or I'm going to lose favor with God or, or I'm no longer righteous. And then we get discouraged and then we get depressed. But, but that's not true. They're, they're the lies of the enemy. 
And, and um, when conflicts arise and Satan begins to accuse us, we simply need to raise our shield of faith as one endowed with authority as the body of Christ. And I have a slide. This is where we're at. We're with Christ. We're seated together with him. We have authority by the fact that we're the body of Christ. We're not anybody. We're somebody. We're the, the we're children of God. We're, we're royalty. I mean, we, we, we have authority because we are. I mean, you think about that verse, 1 Corinthians 6, 17. He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. I think that's how it goes. I'll read it. I'll just find it real quick here. But it says, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17, but he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. I mean, think about it. We're the body of Christ. We're joined to the Lord. I mean, there's a ton of verses on that. You know, we've been planted together with Christ. Romans 6, 5, we've been placed in the grave. We've been baptized into Christ, into his death. We're joined with Christ. Look at that. We have one, we're one spirit with them. We are the body of Christ. We're seated with him at the throne far above the enemy. And we need to claim his righteousness over the enemy's accusations. We must claim exemption based on the fact that we are now in him and that we are righteous already. And again, I'm not saying that you can do whatever you want. And obviously, if we make a mistake and slip, we need to own up to it. We need to acknowledge that. And there's grace for that. And if we've offended somebody, we need to apologize. I'm not talking about that. But obviously, we all agree to that. But I'm talking about the accusations, the fiery darts of the enemy. We must understand we're already righteous in Christ. If I'm not perfect, it's okay. God's given me grace for that. Not that I want to do anything wrong. But what I'm trying to say is I'm already righteous in Christ. And I I want to show you something here. I have an, an exemption certificate. God gave me the privilege to do vaccine exemptions. For the city of Phnom Penh, I was probably the only one doing them because I knew the potential danger in getting these vaccines, especially the ones from the United States. But this exemption is stamped and sealed. And I was thinking, I am stamped with the scars of Christ and I'm sealed with his blood. And, and when the enemy accuses me, like the song, I mean, there are hymns, like the cleansing wave. Christ points to his wounded side. I mean, it's, it's just incredible. And in fact, I'll just, I'll read that one. It, the cleansing wave. It says, in the first stanza, oh, now I see the cleansing wave, the fountain deep and wide. Jesus, my Lord, mighty to save, points to his wounded side. We have the righteousness of Christ. It's been imputed to us. We are complete in him. But Jesus stands as our advocate. I mean, they're a great hymn. Think about the hymn, my faith has found a resting place. You, you've sung this hymn. The second stanza, well, I'll read the first stanza. It says, my faith has found a resting place, not in device nor creed. I trust the ever-living one. His wounds for me shall plead. What is the songwriter talking about? He's talking about overcoming the fiery darts of the wicked one. The enemy is accusing us, but we're righteous already. I raised my shield of faith. It's not my righteousness. It's his. And again, I want to just read Philippians chapter 3, verse 9 again, and be found in him, not in myself. The enemy wants us to trust in ourselves. Here in Cambodia, it's all about self. They say, trust yourself. <laughs> it was really funny. I was on a moto out in the countryside. This Buddhist preacher saw me so when he saw me he knew i was that terrible baptist missionary so he 
and he was had big he had a big loudspeaker. So he saw me and he switched his message. He switched his message. And when he saw me, he started preaching against me. It was kind of funny, but but it was it was along this big road and and a really uh, anyway, they have these big speakers here, and so <laughs> it was so funny. But I mean, he's he's preaching about you know do right and you'll get right. You know, um, if you do good, you'll get good. It's it's all about doing good. You know, and it's all about self and your own righteousness. It's just exactly opposite of our faith in Christ. In Philippians 3, 9 says, and be found in him, not in ourselves, not having mine own righteousness. How clear can you get it? Which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness, which is of God by faith. And I raise my shield of faith and I claim Christ's righteousness, which is now my righteousness, over all the power of the enemy and his accusations. And I have a, a few uh, slides here about that. But, but folks, back to this exemption certificate. If someone holds this exemption certificate, they're exempted from getting the vaccine. Folks, we are exempted from the enemy's accusations because we have a certificate, okay? <laughs> it's a certificate of salvation stamped with the scars, the wounds of Christ, and sealed by his blood. And, and we need to raise our shield of faith and say, I'm claiming Christ's righteousness over all the power of the enemy and his attempt to accuse me and discourage me. I will not have it. I claim total exemption or freedom on the basis of my union with Christ as his body seated with him at the throne and my identity as a child of God who is righteous already. Hallelujah. The enemy is relentless. He doesn't want us being a witness. I mean, this is a missions conference, okay? I mean, really, we're all missionaries. You're missionaries in New York. I'm here in Cambodia. And praise God, there was no violence in New York. We were praying like crazy for New York, New York City, because of the threat of, of, of terrorism there. And, but in our own little church here, <laughs> we had a little problem. We were praying for Israel and somebody who was pro-Palestinian got angry. But anyway, but there wasn't any violence. Praise God. I was like, I can't believe it. <laughs> I'm praying for New York City and now I'm, I'm having a problem in my own church in Cambodia. But anyway, um, but God delivered me. Praise God. But I mean, think about this um, right here. I hand over every trace of self, real or apparent, or the fiery dart of the wicked to the Holy Spirit for him to deal with. And I hide under the shield of faith counting upon the blood of the lamb, the righteousness of Christ, which is now my righteousness. Anyway, I, I just love this. And, um, and I love this. The answer is always in him. You think about it. Um, and we already mentioned this earlier, every problem, every trial, every temptation, every failure, and even those nasty fiery darts, the answer is always in him. We always go back and take our place in him. And um, we have a good God. He's an awesome God. And he wants us out there sharing the gospel. If you listen to the lies of the enemy, you're going to be discouraged and depressed, and you're not going to share. You know, when I was in the U.S., again, this was like 20-some years ago, but I remember I was sharing. Um, John Van Geldren and I are good friends, and basically he taught me everything I know about <laughs> and Jeff Musgrave too. So I, I hung around those guys and, and I love talking about soul winning and divine appointments. But as I was sharing this message uh, all across the U S a long, long time ago, but the statistics, I mean, I, I, it's hard for me to understand this, but they, they said that the statistics were only like 5% of the church ever shares the gospel leads somebody to Christ. So then, so that was, I was quite a while back. And then when I left to come here to Cambodia, it was like down to 2%. And I'm thinking, no, no, why is only 2% of the church sharing the gospel? 
I mean, that's terrible. I mean, but I believe it's because Christians are discouraged. They don't know how to overcome the enemy. The enemy is very upset that you even got saved, of, of course, but he doesn't want you to do anything. He doesn't want you to share your faith. He doesn't give your testimony or pass out a track. And, and, and that's really why I wanted to share this. When conflicts arise again in conclusion, I call the shield of faith the ultimate protection, the ultimate protection, because we can just simply claim our identity in Christ and his righteousness, and the enemy is silenced. Realizing that my righteousness does not depend on my own personal performance or perfection. I have the righteousness of Christ. Hallelujah. And, and I can keep on rejoicing. I mean, look at Philippians 4.4. 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I receive, say rejoice. I mean, that's impossible, you say. Well, rejoice in the Lord always. In the Lord, if you're in him, if you're abiding in him, you can rejoice. You can. It is possible. So just like to, to close there and read that verse again, Philippians 3, 9. I, I believe it's a great rhema to keep us rejoicing and keep us out there serving God and sharing the gospel and leading people to Christ. I mean, one of our guys just led a few people to Christ in one of our new churches up the up the road, about 47 kilometers north of me right now. And it was awesome. He was he led several ladies to Christ. I mean, this guy is a survivor. He's the only one left of his family. It's so sad. <clears throat> the Khmer Rouge killed his entire family. He was the only one left. And um, he met one of our church members and um, one of our church members led him to Christ. Now he's, he's coming to our church. He's on fire for God. He's starting a new church. I mean, it's just incredible. And this guy's a great soul winner. But I mean, he's the only one left of his family, but God spared him. And now... Anyway, he's serving the Lord. and But anyway, we did a clinic there, a medical clinic outreach there, and really helped the things get started again up there. So but we appreciate you um, co-laboring with us, partnering with us. We'll talk about that later. But I want to just end with this verse again. Let's, let's just read Philippians 3, 9. And uh, what a great verse. And be found in him. And that's what Paul forsook all for. And that was what he was wanting to win. To win Christ is, is this. this were, and then it says, I press toward the mark of the prize, the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I believe it's this, to be found in him. That's the high calling. Let's read it. And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith.